Hello again. It's been a while since the last video. It's now mid-January 2020 and uh, I figured out that uh, I'll show you my current project that is not the big boat but uh, some changes into my small boat and I think many people are quite interested of this issue. So let's talk about putting an electric motor on the sailboat. Uh, since the last video the boat has been taken out from the lake and uh, it's on the hard near the harbor. I figured out that I had to do something about the electric system for the boat because it was total mess. At the same time I thought that hmm, the boat has this outboard engine right now and uh, it's it's okay but uh, there is a gasoline smelling all the time inside and uh, it's a little awkward to use when it's back there and uh, I figure out the boat has had uh, originally Volvo Penta gasoline engine inside there so there's a place for the sail driving it's quite old but uh, there's still, still some parts available for that sail drive and uh, so I figure out couldn't I put an electric motor in there after all we are on the lake side and the distances are not that long here and uh, so I ordered just before Christmas this thing <sighs> this is a 3 kilowatt BLDC motor and uh, it's a little on the lower side of the power needed to push the 27 feet boat. But uh, we're on the lake side, so there's not that nasty weather and uh, waves and things. So I think this will be plenty enough. It's manufactured by Golden Motor in China. I ordered it straight from the, from the manufacturer, but uh, I'll put a link in the description to Amazon store where you can get this. Uh, it feels very sturdy. The cables are, well, they could be a little better, but I think they will be okay. If you don't know what BLDC motor is, uh, it's uh, basically brushless DC motor. And uh, actually it's not DC motor at all, because as important as this, the other part of the motor is this one. So this is the BLDC controller. It takes in DC current and transforms it to three phases of AC. So this motor is actually AC motor, but it's driven by this inverter thingy. So this was the starting point to get these. Uh, they cost uh, just a little over 1000 euros with the taxes and stuff. But in addition, I also want to renew all the other electric systems in the boat. It was, uh, the boat is from 1981 and uh, most of the electric systems are original or change or added something there and there and it was total mess so I already ripped out everything and uh, bought everything new. Uh, I figure out I'll go through the system in this video a little more detail and uh, maybe this will be some kind of uh, video series of this thing. This thing is 48 volts. Most of the boat systems are 12 volts and uh, when using this kind of thing 48 volts is a really good thing because it reduces the currents a lot so as you can see these wires they are not that thick because they use higher voltage i can explain maybe later if you want about the voltage and uh, the wire sizing which is totally another topic that's the reason that uh, i have to actually build two systems into the boat and uh, i'll put uh, this here, here the simple schematic of the system. So on the left side here, we have the 48 volt system. It contains the batteries, the charger for the batteries and uh, all the things that make the batteries work and uh, are secured and, and stuff. So of course there's a battery monitor. Uh, one important thing when using electric motor and uh, batteries is to know how much there is juice in the battery. So I bought this uh, Victron battery monitor. It's an expensive one. Uh, there are cheaper ones, but none of those cheap ones didn't work with 48 volt, or at least they didn't say that. So I went to the expensive one. This is the basic model. There's also Bluetooth versions of this. And uh, so this is important. You can see the uh, battery status here and uh, how much you have uh, charged and how much you have used. Also the condition of the bat batteries. The next one is the main fuse. So of course there has to be a lot of fuses in the, this kind of system. So 
This is uh, just a basic uh, high current fuse. So this is uh, 150 amps. So this is the main fuse from the batteries to the rest of the system. Then there's a, this another thing. I'm not really sure about this battery protect. So I watched a bunch of videos of uh, and uh, done research of, of the system, but I'm planning to use uh, lead acid batteries. I know that lithium ion phosphate uh, batteries, they are way cheaper in the long run. I, I know that and uh, they just cost so much more. It's more than four times more in this size boat and uh, figure out, okay, we don't use that motor so much in here, lakeside. So at least now I'll put the lead acid batteries, just basic cheap ones and let's see how they work. It's possible to change the batteries. They are a complete different system. So the battery monitor works, the, the battery protect works and everything works with the lithium as well. So about this battery protect, this device is uh, for protecting the batteries going under the certain voltage. So especially in the lead acid batteries, you don't want to discharge them too much. So this measures the voltage and if the voltage drops under the certain uh, level, it cuts out the power so that the batteries don't discharge too much. The problem with this is that you can't use recharge function of this uh, BLDC motor. So it is possible with this motor and the a controller to charge the batteries when you're on sale. So it's possible, but my boat is quite small and the speed is not that great. So I really doubt that there is coming anything useful. But anyway, if you have this one between there, this can handle the current only one direction. So, so you can't use the recharge option in there. Then there's another fuses and uh, then there's this uh, main contactor. So then there's uh, this doohickey. So this is the main contactor and uh, contactor is uh, basically a switch that can handle a large current. So if you put a regular switch and push 100 amps through it, it will melt. This is basically a switch that is uh, controlled by the ignition key. So I, I'm going to have a lock there and uh, then additional switch. So I can turn off easily the motor controller when I don't need it. This is the like a start switch. Here you can see it has, uh, these two are the main current flow and the smaller ones are for switching this on and off. So very simple. And uh, then the motor is actually controlled through this. So it's a totally different system controlling the motor itself. So there's a bunch of wires that uh, one of these should be the throttle here. You can connect a potentiometer here. And then there is another switch for the uh, reverse, so I can reverse with this thing. Okay, uh, then we have this main switch for 12 volts. So I, I'm going to have only one battery bank and uh, I'm going to turn the 48 volts to 12 volts for the rest of the appliances, which are very basic uh, bolting stuff. So the thing that makes that happen is this one. This is uh, Victron uh, Energy Orion 48 to 12 volt. DC DC power supply. So I put uh, 48 volts here and it brings 12 volts out and uh, I can use all the appliances of the rest of the boat with this thing. So then this is totally isolated from the 48 volt system. So I'm basically having two systems and uh, after this I just put these uh, just regular switchboards and uh, fuses and stuff. Okay, then the mechanical side. So as, as I mentioned, the boat has had a sail drive. Uh, it has been taken off uh, years ago. As you can see here, uh, this is uh, from the bilge of the engine compartment. And uh, there's this doohickey in place that I actually got removed today. And it's right here. So let's see, this is a little greasy and gross. This is a... Uh, the through hull, we have this uh, rubber sealant that goes 
between this and the hull and uh, the sail drive goes under here and the motor goes up here and uh, this is the sail drive so as you can see they are quite small this is not very huge huge system uh, it goes through here I think something like that no actually other way around <laughs> goes like this and this is my propulsion system and the motor goes up here so what I need to do mechanically first of all make sure that this doesn't leak so there's uh, this old cooling water intake in here so I have to deal with that somehow and also uh, the, this uh, sail drive has a front and reverse gear inside there it's disabled already so it it's uh, permanently going forward i don't need the gear switch and i have to make sure that the hole for a handle doesn't leak and, and stuff and then uh, we need to somehow put the motor oh it's a little heavy couple the motor with this thing so we need a middle plate here that connects into this somehow and connects into this motor and then of course the coupler between the motor axle and the sail drive axle so that's the mechanical part and uh, I'll make another video of that I have a uncle that works in the metal shop so I think we're going to see some really fancy stuff when we are making this connection here so what else uh, I have most of the stuff already here and I put uh, some links down below to get them from Amazon. Some of them was a little hard to find, especially the things that uh, work with the 48 volts. They are not that common, so I had some hard times with that. Uh, the one big thing that is still missing are the wires. So wiring is just another quite hard thing to do. When, and uh, measuring the wires correctly and uh, uh, figuring out the amperages and stuff. I think I'll make another video just for that. Uh, other stuff for the 12 volt system, there is nothing really special. Of course, all the all the lights will be LED, and uh, I have a couple new instruments here. For example, this uh, electromagnetic log has a new display. All the displays were broken; uh, nothing worked on the world. Then there's this uh, doohickey that uh, transforms the signal from this log thing into a NMEA, the old one, yeah. Oh, this is the speed log thing, no moving parts here, so I really like that. Same manufacturer, NASA Marine from UK. This is just basic uh, depth sounder. So when we are on the lakeside here and try to figure out where we put our anchor and thing, one thing I really missed was the depth. Okay, that's it, I think. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, do it now, because I'm going to do a few videos of this topic. So, how this electric motor will work, how I'm going to install it with that old sail drive system. And uh, of course, the main project, the big boat, it's still under consideration, of course. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, I have to first build up some kind of shed or place to build it, so it's, there's no reason to go further with that before I got that figured out. So that's one thing, and another, of course, is the hull design. Hopefully I'm going to put some effort soon. But as a side project, I think this will uh, uh, interest quite a many of you, and uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, advices if you have done something like this yourself put some comments down there and uh, see you on the next video in near future